This video will boldly make the claim that cross-generation support needs to die, and the sooner the better. I'm not even talking about just now. I'm saying the moment a new console comes out, it's like the previous version doesn't even exist anymore. Cross-generation titles are what you see at the moment on the PlayStation consoles, but applies to other systems as well. Let's focus on Sony just to make things easier. God of War Ragnarok, launched on both the PlayStation 4 and the PS5. While the PS5 version has some small benefits like better resolution or frame rate, overall, the experience is exactly the same across the two platforms. Now this may seem like a wonderful pro-consumer move where the PS5 owners get the better version and PS4 owners are not forgotten or forced to buy a whole new console just to be able to play. But what if I told you you're wrong? What if I said this is not pro-consumer and even costs you more money in the end? Bet you're listening now. Allow me to elaborate. Currently, we are about four years into the PS5 and Xbox Series X lifespan. The halfway point and very few games look better than what is available on previous consoles. Even those games that do look better, you have to look very closely, Digital Foundry style, to even notice the difference most of the time. The simple explanation to this is cross-generation support. If a new PS5 game has to work on the PS4 as well, they can't push things too far, as it means the PS4 version will be a disappointment. Look at Cyberpunk 2077 for example. Now, not everything is about graphics. After all, when a new console comes out, it pretty much has no install base. An install base is how many people own a console. So the PlayStation 4 has 117 million consoles sold. This is the install base and that matters to developers because they are the ones who buy their games. So, developers have a tough choice. They can spend $100 million on making a true next generation experience that is only possible on the latest hardware, but the install base is tiny, so they don't really make much money. Or it's a good enough looking game that also launches on previous hardware. Now instead of the game appealing to a very few select minute early adapters, they instead have a market of 100 plus million. This of course is all natural. The PS4 launched in 2013. Of course it's going to have more consoles sold and in people's hands 11 years later compared to newer tech. However, this is the part where things get interesting. At the moment when a new console comes out, you know that support for your current system will not suddenly stop. You can take your time migrating across, and not only that, but by the time you do, you will pay less for the same console and have even more games waiting for you. You also know, because of cross-generation support, that the next system will not truly have a must-have I cannot believe how amazing this game looks experience for anywhere between 3 to 5 years into the life cycle. There is no incentive for you to pay hundreds of dollars for a new console that is likely at least 4 years away from even being used properly. Now. While it may sound like this conversation is over, allow me to blow your mind and trigger the cheapskates who are listening. Having cross-generation support actually costs you more money in the long run because the reason we keep needing to buy new pieces of hardware in the first place is because we take too long to start taking full advantage of them to begin with. By the time the PS4 gets dropped and developers can really start to understand what they can get out of the PS5 system, the specs are already starting to date and Sony is already preparing their next system. So the reason we keep having to buy new consoles with new specs is because we don't properly use what we already have to begin with. Let's role place for a second. PlayStation 6 comes out and PlayStation 5 support is immediately dropped. The public is advised of this before launch, so they can consider their options. Sony also advises that all of their games from launch on the PlayStation 6 will give us the best experience the system is capable of. Now, PlayStation 5 owners have a tough choice to make. 
They know they will not be getting any more games on their system. So the incentive to wait out the four years of support is gone. Are they happy to miss out for almost a decade? Of course not. Not only that, but the PlayStation 6 games are already looking incredible from day one. Before, during the cross-generation, it's easy to ignore the next system since it doesn't even look better than what you already have. Even if only a third of the install base takes the PlayStation 6 bait, it would grow faster than any other previously. The install base, growing so much faster than previous generations, would also attract even more publishers and developers. By the fourth year, developers are already experienced and have learned how to optimize their games. This is super important. Optimization is knowing the system in and out and knowing how to push things. It means that even though the specs have obviously not changed four years later, the games will continue to look better and better and that goes for performance as well. Let's not forget that customer satisfaction will be through the roof. PlayStation 5 owners currently are not happy to have to wait so long to warrant the original purchase. We are still waiting to be blown away but how would we all feel right now if from day one we were getting our money's worth? Word of mouth would be super positive and glowing. What this would also do is build better brand loyalty and drastically increase early adopters for the PlayStation 7. Teach your fans what to expect and deliver. If everyone was wowed and felt looked after with the PlayStation 6, PlayStation 7 Day 1 would be a no-brainer. Knowing we would get the best system, knowing we would get the best the system has to offer from the word go. Now, an interesting point is, if we buy a system from the start and it lasts the usual 6 to 8 years, that's a long time. Currently, many people buy a new console four to five years into its life cycle, and only two to three years later, the next console launches. Of course, they are not interested, but if they had been part of the journey from the start, they would be just as keen as everyone else to invest in the next game and experience. Console manufacturers would have more confidence as well if people were all buying from the start and developers could jump on board as soon as possible. It's all a big chain reaction as you can see. Cross-generation support slows everything down, removes any incentive to buy newer systems to begin with, and by the time we are in full motion, it's time for the next system. Now stock, and plenty of it, is important for this type of plan to work. It doesn't matter if you have the best system on the market, best games from day one. If it still needs four years to match supply with demand, that would cause the install base to still grow too slow and make publishers play the waiting game. Nintendo, interestingly enough, with the Nintendo Switch 2, has confirmed that stock is a focus for their next system and they want to be able to hit the floor running with meeting demands when they launch. So to summarize, I feel cross-generation slows the next system from really taking off, gives us worse looking games, it gives us less impressive worlds, less impressive systems. I think the reason why people don't want to upgrade in the first place is because they can't really see a reason to warrant it. But mark my words, if a brand new video game system comes out with games that have visual fidelity and quality and effects and systems going on that we have never seen before and is well beyond what you have in front of you, you would not hesitate to upgrade and go to the next system. We only hesitate now because of the artificial conditions created ironically enough by people not upgrading to the next system because the console manufacturers, publishers and developers are not making games that look good enough in order to tempt you to begin with. Now, of course, this video is very focused on graphics because that is just the easiest thing to portray. But of course, with extra power means we can get better programming, better effects, better physics, better things that impact actual gameplay, world and design. But visually, that's the first thing you can see. Visuals is what you can set, you can put in a commercial. Visuals is what you can get across to the average consumer. And if games look 
Indistinguishable, God of War Ragnarok is pretty much the exact same, it's not pretty much, it is the exact same game between platforms. There's no incentive there for people to want to go across and buy. There's no incentive there for any brave new developers to go there and make the best cutting edge game possible as early as possible because they need to wait for the install base to grow really slowly because people on the older systems are still being looked after. So sometimes a little bit of a push and shove does need to happen for the best interest. Of course, another element elephant in the room that does need to be addressed since I am using Sony as an example is you have to have games you have to have experiences that respect the fans and gamers and everyone knows at the moment that Sony is really messing up with that at the moment they put political mumbo jumbo into their games they put virtue signaling in front of proper gaming experiences and instead of trying to make the absolute best games possible they have other priorities other target audiences and are actively disrespecting and avoiding their own fan bases if this ada playstation 6 that i'm referring to is meant to hit the running even though it was an example sony would have to get back to making games that gamers actually want get back to putting the video games first get back to putting escapism first and get back to remembering that games are games and not meant to be reflections of real world political social mumbo jumbo we play games to get away from that and sony has forgotten that and has forgotten that for a while if anything the amazing memory of the playstation 4 and what sony did with that is what is single handedly carrying the PlayStation 5 currently. Now all companies can learn and adapt and hopefully Sony can get back on their feet, but just want to clarify right at the end of this video, Sony coming out with an amazing PlayStation 6, just as an example, following all the guys that have put out above. If they do all that, but the games still aren't what they used to be, if Sony still doesn't get back to what made their games great to begin with, where the focus was on games and the game isn't making everyone feel respected, if Sony doesn't do that, then no. Doesn't matter how amazing PlayStation 6 is, doesn't matter how fast the install base grows, doesn't matter if they cut off support for the PlayStation 5 immediately and the PlayStation 6 is the best thing ever. No one cares about the best thing ever if the best thing you're playing is garbage. So hopefully Sony can learn, get back to where they were. I wish them all the best of luck with that. I have the PlayStation 5 console and I think the actual system is great. But Sony currently has failed to bring out anything themselves that warrant the purchase. And I hope they can learn. God bless you all. Take care.